when I'm working a portrait, I'm not thinking about the face as a smooth, curved surface. I'm thinking about it as if it was carved out of wood. Like I'm painting Pinocchio and Geppetto hasn't gone in with the sandpaper yet and smoothed it all down. Hi, welcome to Paint Coach. My name is Chris Fornatero here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. Now, I came up with these five pieces of advice or five tips based on the co most common things that I see beginner oil painters struggle with in painting portraits. Now, before I get into those tips, if you wanna see the full version of this painting video tutorial and a bunch of other painting video tutorials, you can do that on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. And please, if you like this video, if you like this channel, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel grow. If you have a comment, you have a question, leave it in the comments section. All right, now let's talk about painting portraits. All right, the first thing I wanna talk about is getting your portrait drawn on there correctly. Now, if you're really good at drawing, you can freehand this. If you can do that, congratulations. You have a lot of drawing skills and drawing skills are very important. Now, if you don't have the best drawing skills, I highly recommend measuring out key points on your portrait. What do I mean by this? I mean, using a ruler, you can use a proportional divider, you can use sight size method, you can hold up your brush and do the thumb and the brush thing and whatever it is you need to do to get accurate measurements. I personally like using a proportional divider. I'll put a link to where you can get this on Amazon below, but pretty much this just helps me measure key points on the face that I need to get an accurate drawing in. Like I'll figure out where the top of the head is, where the chin is, where the eyes fall, where the nose fall. And just having these key measurements will help me construct a loose but accurate drawing. My initial drawings for a painting aren't really that detailed but they are accurate. I personally don't like getting a lot of detail with my initial drawing because when I've done that in the past, I feel like I end up just kind of coloring in the lines. Like I, I feel like I'm, I'm not as loose and not as free. And I just like the way my portraits come out better when I have just a vague, loose outline of a drawing. And again, don't get this looseness and this vagueness confused with accurate or inaccurate. These measurements that I got are accurate. So I have a good, strong guidance as to the placement of the features. And when you're getting your measurements, you can get as many measurements as you want. You can measure where the eyes are, where the eyebrows are, where the nose is, whatever you need to get the accurate placement of the features. I just wanna say after you get these measurements and are drawing in your subject, to be aware of getting too detailed because I see a lot of people that have a very detailed drawing be hindered by it. They're so worried about messing up their very detailed drawing or painting outside the lines that their painting comes out stiff and lifeless. And we don't want that. All right, tip number two is break your portrait down into two sections, dark, and light. I like to use a big brush and I like to just block in the major dark shapes and the major light shapes with thin paint. And this is paint thinned out with paint thinner, so it's gonna dry very easily and be easy to paint over top of. And right now, I'm not even worried about getting the exact right value or the exact right color. I just want it to be in the ballpark. I'm feeling out the structure and form of the face right now. I want a general sense of just where the lights and the darks are. My goal is to cover every piece of the canvas with paint. If you find yourself leaving little sections of bare canvas, like where eyes are or mouth or anything like that, that's an indication that you're painting a little too safe. Don't worry about painting outside the lines right now. There'll be time later to dial everything in and get good detail. Tip number three is that value is way more important than color. If you did a portrait and the values were spot on perfect, but the colors were way off, it would read as a much better portrait than say the opposite, where the colors were absolutely spot on, but the values were way off. There's a phrase that I think is true, which is value does all the work, but color gets all the credit. So value is how light or dark a color is. An important portraits, these shifts in value are very, very subtle. One of the most common mistakes that I see with portraits is that the darks are way too dark and the lights are way too light. Now, it's also about value relationships. How much darker or how much lighter is a value next to each other? I'm constantly looking at my painting as a whole and comparing the values. It's like, all right, is this section darker or lighter than this, this section? It's like, okay, it's darker, but it's lighter than this section over here. But this section is lighter and darker than that section. And it helps me dial my values in correctly. For example, in this portrait, the left side of the face is in shadow, but there are sections in the cheeks that are a little bit lighter in value. So I wanna get those lighter values in, but I wanna make sure not to push them too bright because even though they are lighter than the shadows around it, they're still darker than the light side of the face on the right. So 
there's this window of value that I need to hit for it to read as lighter, but still read as in the shadows. If you struggle identifying the value in colors, I highly recommend constantly taking a picture of your painting and putting it in black and white and taking your reference photo and put it in black and white to compare them. Also a great exercise is to do monochromatic paintings. Just using one color you can take like ivory black and white and just do a gray painting. You can take burnt umber, some other dark color and just add white to get the different values. But practicing with just one color will really up your value skills. All right, tip number four is to think about the face in terms of its planes. When I start out a portrait, I'm thinking of the planes as very big, simple planes. You have the front plane of the face and the side planes. You have planes that are completely in shadow, some that have light. And as the painting progresses, I get more detailed and smaller and smaller with the planes. It gets to a point where every stroke that I make with my brush is identifying a plane in the direction that it's facing. When I'm working a portrait, I'm not thinking about the face as a smooth curved surface. I'm thinking about it as if it was carved out of wood. Like I'm painting Pinocchio and Geppetto hasn't gone in with the sandpaper yet and smoothed it all down. When you can really nail the planes of the face correctly, every brush stroke is gonna add so much more form to your portrait. It's not towards the end of the painting that I find myself smoothing out the transitions of these planes to make it read more as smooth curved skin. And I do this by placing a value that's between two different values that are next to each other to soften the transition, or I kind I just pull my brush between them, softening and blending the paint a little. And this is about as much blending as I do. I don't know if you could consider this blending. It's more of softening an edge than blending. And the last tip is pick and choose what you put detail into. You don't have to put detail into everything. For example, here in my reference photo, I can see every single hair in the photo, but I don't put every single hair. I pick and choose where to put it. And how do I pick and choose? Honestly, it's just instinct. I stand far away from my painting. I kind of take it as a whole and I just feel out where I want to indicate hair. This also goes for highlights. Like here, the brightest highlights are on the nose and the right cheek. And I put those in not using straight white. A common mistake is a lot of people want to go to straight white because they think it's the brightest highlight and they really want to push that highlight. Try the best you can to not go to pure white. So much of portrait painting is restraint. It's showing restraint in your details. It's showing restraint in your values. Part of your job as an artist is to pick and choose what you want to show. We're not a camera. We're not a photocopier. We're an artist and an artist makes decisions on what to show and what not to show. And the more you paint, the better you're going to get at making those decisions on what's important to translate what you want to translate. Also, remember at the beginning of the painting, we were using a big brush with very thin paint. And now at the end of the painting, we're using a very small brush, but with very thick paint. Most of the time at the end of your painting, all your details and your highlights are gonna be done with just straight paint, or at least that's what I do. All right, I hope you found these tips helpful. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you wanna see the full version of this painting video tutorial, you can find that on my Patreon page, which is linked in the description below. If you wanna see what I paint on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I'm Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. Whoa, you're still here. You made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like it. In that case, you should hit the subscribe button. You'd also probably like this video too, and this video.
Please pick one. All right, this is getting awkward. 